But I'm going barefoot now. I'm gonna play. Ronaldo, Messi, watch out. There's a new kid in town. Or should I say, a big kid in town. Today, I'm making my debut in the little leagues of Borneo. Yeah, I'm not as young as I used to be. Welcome to Kuching. Borneo is a huge island in East Malaysia shared by other Malaysian states such as Sabah, Indonesian Kalimantan, the tiny nation of Brunei and Sarawak, where I'll be staying for a few days. This island is known for its biodiverse rainforest and amazing wildlife. Today, I'll be exploring the capital of Sarawak with Farha. She's a local. I'll be trying these iconic dishes, especially this one. Wow. I start off my tour at Carpenter Street. And the rest of the buildings around here are at least 100 years old. We stop off here for my first cup of tea since I arrived in Asia. It's or known as bipang. Okay. They're sweet, they're crunchy. It's very good. The rice that they use for this mm. is smoked first. It's uh, roasted. This is very nice. It is very much like Rice Krispies. Mm -hmm. So this part of this uh, street is, is it a Chinese heritage? Yes, yeah? this is the original Chinatown. So you've got uh, Kuching is the capital of Sarawak, as right. you may already know. And it started out as a port. Mm. So a lot of traders, a lot of businesses um, over here on the riverbank because that's where they they built the warehouses. Yeah. That's where all the vessels would land and unload the goods and they would just start from there. So the port brought in a lot of money. Population, demographic mm. in Kuching? For Kuching, we, the demographic is really, really diverse. Yeah. Um, we In Kuching alone, there are probably about 30 ethnic and sub-ethnic groups all together. Wow. 5% Malay, about 20, 21% Chinese. Wow. The biggest one is actually the Dayaks. So they make up about 40% of the population, about almost half. And the, the Dayak people, the indigenous, indigenous people. So the indigenous tribes consist of smaller tribes, smaller ethnic groups that can be divided into land Dayaks, sea Dayaks, and the ones from way upriver. Let's just put it this way. We have been uh, awarded the first title. Uh, Kuche has been awarded the, for the, the the first city to be awarded City of Unity by well, it, it's internationally recognized. Oh wow! You can see what's inside. Okay. So it looks like this. See vegetables, peanuts. Okay. Seasoning. Right. That. Nice. Can we have one now? Yeah. Right. So these are. Oh, it's nice peanut. You can smell the peanut. You can there. smell the peanut, yes. Right, 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 right. A bit on the spicy side as well. Mmm. What do you think? I like it. I like, you it, like a lot. it. Very soft. Very soft. Very the, the filling is the filling is bursting. Yeah. They don't make it like this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your spot for spring rolls, yeah? Yes. Mm. So they get sold out pretty fast, so there's only like three left. Really good. <laughs> really, really good. Really, really good. Oh, okay. So you've seen the Chinese business district. Yeah. This is the Indian business district. Um, Chinese trade everything. Indian businessmen usually would deal with textiles okay. and on the other side, spices. Spices. Most of the Indian population, the very little that we've got, that tiny, tiny percentage that we've got, yeah. are Muslims. They were traders. They came of their own accord on their own vessels oh, wow. as importers and exporters of, well, textiles. Oh, wow. And they ended and up staying. And they ended up staying, marrying locals. Nice. Getting rich. Yeah, rich. <laughs> 
safe in trade yeah. for everyone. So this is where people would go to for well textiles and also at the very end of the year before the start of the school term. Right. This is where all the school uniforms would be sold. This is a shortcut to the spice markets, but it's also known as the Indian Mosque Lane. So it's a small passageway locally known as Lorong Sempit, which basically means really, really narrow lane mm. uh, that connects India Street to Gambier Street. So it's right over there. And there's a hidden gem inside. It, the building is no longer used, but it's still there. It's still standing. It's probably the oldest mosque in the city, built by the Indian merchants. Oh, wow. And Through this. Is it an alleyway? Can I call it an alleyway? It is. So Gambier Street is known uh, for the spice market. It has, it has shrunk now. The size isn't that big anymore. Right. But this is the building I was telling you about. This is the women's entrance of the building. Okay. So the city mosque. Oh, okay. The in India. So it's Little India Street. So this is Masjid India, the Indian mosque. You can see over there the time says it's since 1834. Wow. So. You can't go in because they lock this place up. They're protecting the place from uh, vandalism. vandalism and everything because it's no longer used, but it's still standing. Mm. And uh, you see that picture right there? That was how the mosque used to look like back in the day. So it was visible. So we're here trying to get some yam puffs. Ada. Mau coba satu? Potong. Potong apa? Hmm? Satu, potong tiga lah kalau dapat. Ya. Kalau dua, nah, besar. Potong tiga ah. What is this? Puffs. Sorry, pasties. So, you have curry puffs. You have siu pao and yam puffs. So, curry puffs are very common. Right. Uh, you've got them everywhere. But, and chicken. Thank you. She said. So this is a mixture of. Yeah, it's actually cut into quarters, so you can take a quarter. I take a quarter. Yeah. Take a quarter. Be very careful. Like that. Yeah. Be very careful because it will drop. Okay. Okay. So if you can see it, is what we're dealing with it's right chicken now. Chicken and yam. Chicken and yam. Yes. It's a bit like you're right. It's a bit like uh, a Cornish pasty. Yeah. something I get for lunch. Just one of those will keep me going. It's true. No, it is very filling. You can tell that is incredibly tasty. So tasty. So tasty. It's crispy, crispy, crunchy, crunchy on the outside. And, and then, then you get that filling. tasty, mm -hmm. savory, sweet filling. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Thank you very much for bringing wrong. me here. <laughs> So yeah, this is actually my go-to spot. Even when I'm not on tour, I come here as well for my dose of laksa. Uh, unfortunately, today they had to modify it, which is also something that I discovered as well. Uh, laksa, but with a twist. You use follow me instead of the rice noodles. I like it here. Uh, they only serve two things, I guess. It's the kolomi and the laksa. So kolomi is the dry noodles with no broth. They have pork slices in them. You made a big statement when it came to <laughs> Sarawak laksa. And what was that? What was that? Please, tell oh. the... Tell the... Yeah. Uh, we are very proud of our laksa because the late Anthony Bourdain called it breakfast of the gods. Breakfast of we the gods. We absolutely agree. It's heaven. It's generally served for breakfast, so yeah, indeed, it is breakfast of the gods. And we're very proud of it, so nobody talks bad about our laksa, you don't insult the laksa. <laughs> don't. Never. Well, alright, well, if listen, if it doesn't taste good, I'll just keep my mouth shut. I won't say, <laughs> I, won't say I don't want to be deported, I just landed yesterday, so... Right here. 
right. So that's a mix of curry, chili, all sorts of spices. I don't remember them all. Right. And the base is coconut milk. The right. noodles are slightly modified. This one is kolo mi, and yeah. I have to say it's a game changer. Really? It's a life changer. Wow. Uh, normally people would use the rice noodles. They look a little bit like glass noodles. Okay. And then you've got shredded omelet. Yeah. It's shredded chicken, sorry. Yeah. And then you've got shredded omelette right here. Bean right. sprouts, right. coriander leaves, and prawns, and shrimp. Right. So, if you would like to bring out the flavour even more, you squeeze yeah. a bit of lime into it. Okay. okay. I like the seeds in, so... Okay. That will, if you are a bit sensitive to the heat, that actually takes away the heat a little bit. Okay. Okay. Uh, but if you're crazy like me, there's chili paste on the side yeah. that you can throw in as well and mix it together. Yeah, that is crazy, but I'll, I'm going to give it a go still. Yeah. I'd rather laxa. <laughs> Marmite butter on toast. Uh, that's what I was brought up eating for breakfast. Yeah. Oh my god, this is so good. So, so, so delicious. Incredibly delicious. Wow. Oh I hope you, you're saying that because you, it's actually good and not because you don't want to get whacked in the mm -mm. head. <laughs> no, I'm not just saying that so that I don't get deported. I'm saying it because it is really tasty. No, this. Really, and the broth. This kolomi is a game changer though. Oh um, my god. It will be a lot lighter with a normal glass in those. Yeah. It would have been, yeah, you're right, it would have been. But it's, it's so good, man. so good. I don't mind this noodle though, because it's got a bit of a bite to it, to be mm -hmm. fair. Mm. Oh, I can see that you are cultured. Mm. You, you know your way around chopsticks. Come on. Um, this is incredible, because as I say so far, it's spicy, but then it's sweet, then it's got a little bit of creaminess. Then it's got a little bit of a sweetness. It's a healthy balance of everything, and this is what it's about. And uh, I can see why the great Bourdain said this is the breakfast of the gods. And I can't believe this is breakfast. You know what I'm saying? I really can't believe it. <laughs> Honestly. So once you eat this, you're quite full for the rest of the, yeah. the day, isn't it? Keeps you going. Keeps you going. Um, I normally have oats when I'm at home for breakfast. Oats, and that's it. Oats, banana, honey. That's me. Yeah. This beats it, yeah. trumps it by far. It is tasty. It is so. I like to take people through hidden lanes. I know, right? <laughs> you and your secret passages. I know. It's like Harry Potter. Oh, yes. Platform nine, three quarters. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hello. Nice to eat, yeah? yeah. <laughs> how much did he pay you to say that? <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, only for one piece. Oh, okay. Baru so, nak it's belajar. It's like a pancake, yeah? Yeah. So that's how he makes it. So he can like film the the process, actually. Yeah. And this is the finished product right here. Right. Everybody says, everybody says, if you want to have a pambalik, go to the one in the dockyard, which is his, his place, mm. right there. He has you the like best it? one. Yeah, it's banging. It is banging. Mm. That's nice. It's really nice. Really, really nice. It's a typically London thing to say, it's banging. <laughs> <laughs> Very typically London. <laughs> Very <laughs> it's fluffy, it's got that fluffy pancake mm -hmm. texture and then inside it you got like you know nuts mm -hmm. like grounded nuts isn't it peanuts yeah, peanuts, yeah. and is there a butter mm -hmm. sort of butter in there it's really really tasty really tasty really really good and it was still quite warm so it gives it that a bit more of a warm sort of vibe mm -hmm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. did well there you did she so far she's doing really well thank you doing really well ka-ching the flavours are 
popping, popping flavours. This is our state legislative assembly. So sort of like a parliament. Parliament, yeah. For Sarawak. Because we are so big, we have so many territories. Right. Uh, within Sarawak, so many divisions. We can't have a small building to conduct our affairs. We need an equivalent of a parliament at state level. Okay. Yeah. It's modelled after the Malanao sun hats that they would wear when they go fishing. Oh. And the round shape is actually inspired by the Baruk, which you would see it's uh, in a different form when you go to the Anarais Longhouse tomorrow. It's a meeting place. Uh, Baruks are known as uh, meeting places for chiefs, okay. which exactly embodies the, the spirit of the whole thing. This is where the chiefs would meet okay. and discuss how to run the state. We're getting on the boat now. Uh, nice little cottage still, away from the sun. Woo! Needed. The shade here. It's nicely decorated to be fair. Yes. Friday on a boat. Yeah. Uh, that is actually, this is something that has been done since the 1800s. Oh really? And it's still the fastest way for you to get to the other side oh, wow. if you're from these parts. If you were to drive, you know, it, uh, it takes you half an hour. Or maybe it's just five, ten minutes. Oh, really? Oh, wow. This, yes. Uh, man, you need to buy it, you get it. You want to yeah, stopped off. It is hot. I found a snack. We found a snack. What this is this snack? Sago. It's, uh, you know, this little, uh, they come from sago palm. Sago. Yeah. Uh, in Malay, we call it sagu. Sagu. Little flour. Mm. And uh, they mix coconuts and bind it together with eggs. Oh, wow. And they are baked. Oh, wow. Baked and then dried out under the sun. Right, let's try it. Come on, Chris, do the honest. Yes. Break it off. Break off a piece and then try it. It has this coconut mm. sweet and a little bit of a grit to it because of the desiccated coconut. Mm. This is like the Mumuru, Mumuru biscuits, yeah? And you get it in the tin, it's nice. Oh, nice. It's a bit like nice. Yeah. Spot mm. on. It's a bit like that. Just a proper taste of coconut flavour. Yeah, yeah, very strong. Yeah, it's like nice. Mm. There you go. It's actually really good. What we're doing is like we're going to taste a range of different cakes. And then, um, and then we're gonna we're gonna pick one, which is uh, which is cool. So, so the uh, cake muffins or layer cakes, uh, they're actually made layer by layer. This is the original one. This is the original flavor, right here. Mm. So it takes they make it layer by layer, and they heat sources from above. Wow. So from the top of the oven. So it takes about 10 15 minutes for every layer. Yeah. And then because the heat is from the top, mm. so you don't have to worry about uh, it being get, getting burned from below. So 15 minutes, 15 minutes, another 15 minutes until it's done. Sometimes you get a really, really intricate design that can take up to five hours to make. So wow. it's insane. This is the original flavour, it's just butter. It's just butter, is it? Yeah, it's just butter. But how, how long has it been here for? From as far as I remember, it's, uh, it has been since I was in high school. So that was the extent of my knowledge when it comes to this shop, yeah. basically. And the popularity of layer cakes has been... It, it rose all of a sudden when I was a teenager. Wow. Somehow, uh, every, uh, people were... There were demands wow. for it. Right. on a large scale right. and someone decided to commercialise it and this particular shop is actually one of the first ones to do so. Oh wow. So wow. 
still very very popular to this day mm. and then a lot of the other shops have to sprout up as well with layer four and same concept same concept different uh well they have different ways of making it different right. flavors right. various experiments sometimes they have strange names for these cakes right 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 and um, it's uh it has become a signature right. for Sarawak, especially for people from West Malaysia who come here. They would go for this and really? they would buy them by the boxes, like these ones over wow. here. They are packed so that you can check it in as luggage. Oh wow. <laughs> by, by the boxes. I'm going to show you guys. They're smuggling it out the country. <laughs> smuggling it out the country. Well, which which shelf is it on? Just had the Oreo one. Ooh, it's a tough one. I don't know which one I'll go for. <laughs> honestly. And then you just pick one out of these. Coffee. What's your favorite? My favorite is original. Original. And uh, the this one is the the Koi Nescafe, something like a coffee test. Okay. Yeah. And uh, this uh, this is cappuccino. Cappuccino, yeah? yeah cappuccino. Okay, so this is not bad. One, two, three. Yeah. Top three. That's, that's my favorite. <laughs> Finally, we head to Fort Margarita, an old fort that was constructed by Charles Brook, the second Raja of Sarawak. This fort is a landmark monument in this region's history, and it has strong ties with the Brooks dynasty. Here's what Farha said earlier about James Brook uncle of Charles Brooke and the first Raja of Sarawak. About the Brooke family, an English family that ruled the land yeah. uh, during those years from 1841 to 1947. Yeah. Uh, but then before that we were a protectorate of Brunei. Right. So if you look on the map, Sarawak is huge yeah. right? and Brunei is tiny. Okay. But back in the day, nearly half of Sarawak was actually Bruneian. Right. And then at the very end, over here in Kuching, it's like why on the wholly the other side, we were a protectorate of Brunei as well. Okay. And then when Brooke came, uh, he was given Sarawak. At least at that time, it was just Kuching. Yeah. And then later on, uh, as he ventured out further and further up to the central region of Sarawak, where the headhunters are, yeah. and they they got acquainted with these indigenous tribes and somehow got the, uh, these tribes to follow. And this was actually done through a lot of negotiation instead of you know bloodshed. Brook was brought in by the Bruneians to stop piracy in the region. And he did it. He brought peace to the land. But they never gave him what they promised. And because he actually cared, the people liked it. The, the non-royals actually liked him. The common people liked him. And the royals, however, did not like that sort of influence going around in this area. Brooke was actually grooming us for self-government right. at that time. He never believed that this land was his. He was actually helping the people out because the people asked for his help. Right. Set us free from this Bruneians yeah, that were yeah, corrupt. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> wow. So, one of the very rare whites who were loved. So, this is Fort Margarita. Fort named. Margarita. This, this is... used to function as the city's defense fort and it was the last stronghold uh, of Kuching before the Japanese completely overpowered and overran it. Mm -hmm. There are cannons over there, cannons that have been fired uh, as warning shots. Mm. So this is Margarita, this is Margaret Brooke. See how the way she's dressed? Yeah. She has completely immersed herself in the culture. local culture. She even dressed this way when she went home to England. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. She loved it here. She loved it here so much. She was reluctant to leave, but her husband wanted to leave before before he got too old and frail to travel. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the Brooks have a habit of moving away when they get really, really old, old yeah. and frail. They will, they will go back to England so that they could be uh, late to rest over there. Okay. So the succession happens early, not upon death of the Raja, yeah. but before that. Alright, so just 
finished kicking ball with my new friends. We oh, won. Yes. We won. Look, we won. My new friends. Say hello, everybody. Hello. Had a great hello. time. Just finished. You guys hello. are too good. Very good. Very, very good. These guys. Watch them. World Cup. World Cup 2028. <laughs> FIFA World Cup 2028. They're going to be there. Very good. Very good. Was I good? Yes. Was I good? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was good.